back again at the boatyard another day. So you see the praise on, on the cradle. Uh, built this cradle, um, me and uh, another captain built this cradle um, from an older, older cradle. Maybe I'll do a video on, on the design and so on. I bought a prey in uh, October of 2019 and the electronics on board were really, really old. Um, there was the original chart plotter which was um, from 1996 and, and was basically CRT based. Um, there was also a new, more up, up to date um, chart plotter, a Garmin um, GPS map, uh, but again it was, it was 15 years old and didn't have the right um, the right maps for this area anyway. So I decided I wanted to do something different. So I was looking to see if there was an open source project available um, and I found Open Plotter. Um, so I installed it on a Raspberry Pi 3B, an old one that I had uh, for other projects. Uh, and then, <clears throat> then basically that install uh, stayed on the boat for all of 2020. Um, and uh, I used a, an iPad one at the helm to, um, to actually interface with the system and, and use that as both um, gauges and also um, also uh, the, the chart itself. Um, last winter, I upgraded that Raspberry Pi 3 to a Raspberry Pi 4 just to give me a bit more speed when using maps. Um, everything else works great. Uh, and I also updated to Open Plotter version 2. I also added a 10.1 inch screen at the, the nav station here. For the 2022 season, I've added a 15.6 inch waterproof touchscreen. I will be doing a separate video on the install of this monitor, but it is a sunlight readable capacitive touchscreen with zero to 100% dimming for night use. So in this video, I'm gonna basically take you through my install. So I'm on the boat again doing a, a, a few projects um, and uh, I just thought I'd walk you through uh, Open Plotter. The way I have it configured is it, you can see on the screen here you've got Kip running on the right hand side in a Chromium window. So I've got a Chromium window here with uh, four tabs. One is uh, Kip, another one is uh, my Pandora instance. So I play Pandora and then uh, my uh, email, which I basically send um, send stuff to. Uh, and then also I have a, also I have a, um, a window here, which has signal, signal K in there. Um, when you want to look at sig signal K, you can basically just scroll, scroll down and look at all the, all the data coming in um, as it, as it comes in. I usually have the screen configured like this. Um, and then I've got the wind data uh, cycling through here. So it gives me the average true wind speed. Um, and then when I've got a, if you, if I put a location in here, so if I right click here and then navigate to here, you'll see it, it shows you where I've got to go. And you'll say distance, the distance to the waypoint comes up and also the arrival time at the waypoint um, shows up. Now that keeps flashing because I'm not moving, so it sort of doesn't know how to resolve it. This is the apparent wind angle, the true wind angle here, which because we're not moving, they're the same. Uh, the boat heading, uh, again, it's, this is using the GPS, so it's just moving all over the place. Uh, but once you start moving, all this settles down and you get really good data. Uh, you can see the, the information on cross-track uh, error and uh, bearing and then velocity made good. I use the, the route planner. If I want to do a particular race, I've got that one here, for instance. Um, I can look at that and I can show it up on, on the screen. Um, if you want to zoom out, you can zoom out here. You know, there's a touch screen on, uh, at the helm and also at the, the cabin or the nav station over here. hardware layout I have connected to the Pi on a Prey and this has increased over the last couple of years I've been using the system. Here I have colour coded all the subsystems and we'll talk through each one in turn. The areas we are covered are the power circuit, the IMU, the CTOC 
system, the OneWire system, and then the USB system. This slide shows the power coming in from the switched panel and connecting to the sub panel through a bunch of fuses to the uh, LCD screen, uh, the USB hub, and this one goes to the Raspberry Pi through these two power boards. This one is a 3.3 volt power board, and this one is a five volt power board. As you can see, the power through here goes through uh, a diode uh, here and is connected into this power board. This five volt power board goes on to go through a three amp fuse into the, uh, the five volt pin on the Raspberry Pi. So when this is turned on, the Raspberry Pi will boot up. Uh, once the Raspberry Pi is booted up, it will actually send a signal to this line here, which feeds to the relay board and basically switches the relay uh, connection and allows this constant battery to flow also into the power board. If the breaker here is turned off, so it's open, uh, the power, it loses power to the 3.3 volt board, which will send a signal to the uh, GPIO 21 and command the power down. When the Raspberry Pi is powered down, it will then remove the signal from this line and therefore cut the, the connection to the constant battery supply. The IMU is both an accelerometer and a compass. We use it to sense direction, heel angle and pitch using the I squared C connection on the Raspberry Pi. Mine is a Berry IMU, which is now unavailable, but there are plenty of other options out there. Using a Bartin optocoupler board is very simple to read the outputs from your CTOC one bus and get that information into Signal K using the OpenPlotter GPIO app to tell the system which pin the CTOC data will be arriving. Mine is on GPIO 4. The other connections are power and ground, and these go to, to these pins on the optocoupler and also on the other side, the data line and the ground line from the CTOC1 bus. I did have to swap out this resistor for a 10K resistor. One wire sensors and then have distributed them uh, in different parts of the boat, mostly around the engine. So coolant temperature, raw water temperature, engine bay temperature, cockpit temperature and cabin temperature. These have three wires out of them, data, ground and power. The power is 3.3 volts, never use 5 volts. You should add a 4.7K resistor between the data line and 3.3 volt connection. I have mine on GPIO 26. Uh, this is set in the OpenPlot GPIO app. All the USB connections are connected to a powered USB hub that is natively 12 volts. So it, it is connected directly to the sub panel. Connected to this, I have GPS puck, an RS-422 adapter, and a RTL SDR unit. The, the RS-422 to USB sends out sentences in the NEMA 0183 format for a chart plotter and my autopilot to receive. This is how the autopilot gets wind information and not from the CTOC1 bus because on my autopilot it no longer works. The connections are set up uh, in the open plotter serial app. The GPS unit, I have sat under a layer of fiberglass on the side of the boat and it still gets really good satellite reception. The connections are just set up in, this, in the regular serial app within uh, OpenPlotter. So this device is a AIS receiver using software defined radio. It is connected to the hub and then a VHF antenna and it's set up using the OpenPlotter SDR app.